Hello and welcome to this video where I'm going to be demonstrating how a recruiter finds CVs for a job they're working on. Now this is an insight into what a recruiter does on a resourcing level. So I'm going to start off by saying I've got a position which is a Korean customer service representative and it's for a company called Mickey Travel. So they're a travel company and they're looking for someone that can speak to customers in Korea you know via the phone or email and you know generally give customer service now the salary for the position is paying 22,000 and on here I've got it linked to various different job adverts which bring in the people which go into web responses so that's one method I would find so if I click my web responses I can see people have applied on this day you know yesterday today and a few days back so it tells me the source they came through CV library total jobs and this is the email parser so I think someone applied directly on my website now going on to this we can look at how I would actually resource for a CV so this is the advert side now I'm going to show you how I would actually search for CVs on the CV databases so this is the CRM I'm using called Bullhorn it costs about 60 pounds per month and this is an extension which I've added on which is called Broadbean it's pretty good and what it does it gets all my logins for CV library total jobs and read and what it does there is it searches their whole database and I can search in here what I'm looking for so there's 1.3 million P CVs on this database CV library I think there's a lot more but it doesn't pick it up unless I search something so there's about a million on read so total jobs have by far the most and what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for candidates in a certain criteria for this position and contact them afterwards. So I'm going to show you what I would do. So I would search customer service and it's a what's called a Boolean search I believe and what you can do is you can do various different things so you can write customer service or client services and then put it in speech marks and you can also put I'm not going to go into too much detail but I'll just put customers in terms of what you can do with this different because there's different methods you can type and and then put in brackets so it must have and let's say client for example or travel I'm not going to put that in now so you'd put that so it search any of these so it would type customer service and travel or client services and travel so that if there's a must that they want so if the client said to me they want travel experience I would put that and travel in brackets with speech marks but for now I'm just going to search that so the position is in London so depending on location I'm just going to put London good London just wait for this to clear Maybe if I put a postcode, EC1, City of London, there we go. And I want to search quite recent. So this is how long they've been on the C CV database. So if you search one month, you'll pick up anything from the start of um, January. So it's January the 31st um, from there. So if you're really desperate, you can go any time. So we search the whole database or you can go three months back. Um, sometimes if there's a lot of people, I bring it down to a week. So it's really fresh candidates that have just uploaded their CV. And I'm going to put in here job type. I'm not going to do anything with. And I'm going to search 22,000. Sometimes I put 23 just in case. Or I may put even 25. Because the databases have a certain bracket where it will say what's your salary expectations. Is it 20 to 25? So somebody may want 21 but they fall into the 20 to 25 bracket. So I'll put 25 in there. And just to exclude some people, I don't want anyone a two entry level that hasn't worked before. So I'm going to put 18,000 there. And another thing I'm going to do is look for languages, which should be on the side, I believe. Yeah, language. And I'm going to touch Korean as a native language. And I'm going to search. And it should pick up CVs that are you know within this search criteria after that I'll begin shortlisting and then it seems to I don't think that's picked up 
of the languages. So let's try read as an example instead. Korean. And I'm going to show you what I would look for. So I'm going to put the language into fluent as well. And there's 14 results, which is not bad. But I may switch to two months and see what else I get. Because people might have uploaded in December and not been contacted. So 21 is OK. And I'm going to go through these CVs, not one by one, but I'll just pick out. So things I'm looking for is job title. What are they doing now? And what do they want to be as well? So baby language, I don't know what that is. E-commerce buy-in. So I'll just quickly skim through and see if my search is OK. So sales representative, possibly. Fashion sales assistant, yeah. Plant admin, yeah. So it seems OK. And I'm going to click here just for you to see these. And I want to look at what they've done for their last job. So they worked as a global marketing for five months. Handled, so that's perfect. That's exactly what I'm looking for. So they're in at a good location as well. And yeah, so they've done various different customer service roles. So what I'm going to do, yep, so they're fluent in English as well. And what I would do is I would download this CV and I would click it and view it there. So I would give them a call. Also, you can click this section and you can download every CV. So you can untick some that you don't want and you can also click here and it will add it onto my job board um, or my job vacancy there. And I can mass email people as well. So I don't tend to do that because a lot of people tend to come back um, and say, you know, I'm not interested or the salary is too low. But if you do a good search, you should only pick up people interested in that. So I'm going to go through a few more examples. Have a look here. Um, this person's obviously quickly customer service manager at a restaurant. So that's a very customer's facing role. It's not really telephone based, but they do take bookings and inquiries. So that's pretty good as well. So this person would be suitable as well. And I'm going to go through a few others. So I'll try and find one that isn't suitable and why it would not be. So English intermediate, which might be an issue um, as well, because intermediate is, you know, they might not be able to read and write. That might just be their speaking. Also, visa status on a tier five, I believe is a spouse visa. I'm not sure. Um, so that's perfect. Um, have a good memory and provide friendly customer service. See, that strikes me as that English isn't great provide Korean beer for tasting to customers so I wouldn't call I'm not being rude but I wouldn't call this person and um, simply because the language isn't suitable um, I'm coming from Spanish, so, so they studied business management um, and they graduated a while back so if it was recently I would be thinking you know if they graduated in 2019 I would say you know either why haven't they gone into the section or that industry and would they leave this position and um, within a few months if they found something in business management and you know, if I said that to someone, you know, as a question to a candidate, they would say to me, no, 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 I want to do this job. So what I would say is to them, not to trick them, I would say, look, I recruit for, you know, business management roles as well. Would you be interested, you know, in a few weeks talking about those? And if they say, um, even if you got this position and they might say, you know, I'll be settled or, you know, I'll be interested in hearing things six months down the line, then that's fine. So there's ways, obviously, you get familiar with that so fashion sales assistant and they want 25,000 which I think is a bit higher for that sort of um, sales assistant role so I'm gonna have a look and see so that would be worth calling so that could be a person that didn't actually um, get picked up in my search if I searched 22,000 um, so assistant manager in Korea marketing buy-in man so they were a buy-in manager um, and they went on to be a fashion sales assistant so yeah i think this is very she may have got commission or it was quite a high-end sort of so what you can do is actually google the company she worked for as well and it might be a high-end sort of fashion company which is true so she may not be interested she may if i had something for fashion related rather than travel um it will be fantastic but a lot of people will be interested in this role and I've also got their LinkedIn profile as well so you can quickly search there as well so I hope this gave you a bit of insight into what a recruiter does on a day-to-day -day basis now I would either call these people directly have a chat with them and say to them look I found your CV on read and you know I heard you're open to new positions wondering if I can either send you a job description 
or we can have a quick chat now. And it's, you know, I take the friendly, non-pushy approach. People obviously have busy lives. I usually text, call and email these people and see if they would be interested in. Once I have a short list, sometimes I send one candidate, sometimes I send three plus. But for this type of position, I would be looking to send about three people um, over for review. And I usually take good care with that for my clients. So I don't waste their time because that's the number one thing that they don't like is unnecessary CVs and you waste the candidates time as well. So <laughs> you really want to start the recruitment process off good with a good search. Um, nice criteria. I would narrow down the location wise as well. But for this purpose of this video, I wouldn't do that. So you can do it with any other search term. And I hope this helped. I hope this gave you an insight into what recruiters do on a day to day basis and how they find CVs.